Uh, so I want to talk this morning about um, white fur and I have printed out a few pieces or a few images of animals that are either very, very white, so white that they're kind of coming off the page, um, white-ish, <laughs> um, you know, so that we, we still see them as white but actually there's, a, there's quite a lot of colour in there. Um, and again, sort of, you know, we, we, we look at this one and we think, oh, you know, really, really, really white, um, probably because it's got a, um, a background to it. Um, so I just want to um, kind of discuss the colours that um, we have um, going into these pieces. And I know that it's it's quite daunting and quite frustrating when you're drawing a white animal particularly on white paper because um, you know if you've got white white paper how on earth do you draw a white animal and something like this this cat here let me just zoom in a little bit whoops um, if we just move into there so something like this beautiful beautiful image um, but but very very pale, very white. So we need to kind of have a have an idea as to what sort of pencils we could use and actually what colours are in here. Now I would normally do this on um, using Photoshop but I just kind of wanted to do it outside of Photoshop so you could see the images um, and maybe have a look at some of the pencils that I would use for this type of um, piece. So um, let's let's start with the let's start with the cat. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. Um, now, if we look at this, I'm just going to get a piece of um, really white. Of this is really white? No, it's probably not really white actually. This is the Hannah Muller, and actually this isn't this isn't particularly white. This is quite a warm white, whereas the cat is really quite a cool white. So let me just see if I can find something really white. So this is just a piece of computer paper here um, and you can see the difference in colour. Um, this is quite a cool white and this is a warm white even though it's very white. Um, so actually the um, this cooler white would be a good one to kind of put against the cat so you can kind of see um, the colours and everything that we're, we're going to be using. So if I just zoom in again on that, let's move the cat down a little bit. Um, and we can actually see this bright white paper here um, against the cat. Actually, the colours in here are really quite dark. You know, there's, there's no... All of the colours are really quite dark in there, and that's one of the um, that's one of the, the the things that you can do to really really help is to take a piece of bright white paper. It it wouldn't work if I did it on sort of like a warm white or an off white or something like that. You need a bright white piece of paper, and um, just putting a hole or a square or a you know something like that in there can really like a hole punch or something, um, and you can use it as a viewfinder. Okay, so I've got this bright white piece of paper and I've got a, um, a hole punched out of it. Well, a, a very um, a very raggedy uh, square cut out of it because I don't have a hole punch. And I'm just going to move it over the cat um, and probably around its, its lightest fur. And we can see here, the lightest fur here. And we're actually starting to get... You can see actually how dark that is um, in there. You can see up here. It's really it's th this is actually quite bluey compared to the white. It's better if you can get a clean like hole punch or something like that on there. But it's a really really good idea to have something like this, like a little viewfinder, where you can actually see the colour and you can actually relate the colour to um, what it is. So when we look at this cat, um, actually it's a very very cool piece. So I would be looking at a lot of. Um, cool greys in there so I've got this is the cool grey uh, cold grey one so this would be a really good colour in here but also some uh, violets in there 
Um, we've got some warm colours in here as well. So when we come down to sort of like this area here, this is quite warm in here on the printout. Um, this area in here is quite warm. We kind of come over to sort of like where his back sort of drifts out a little bit. Let's just blow that out zoom out a, a touch there but you can see where this, this comes out um, and actually if we had that on the if we put that viewfinder in there you know you can kind of see that it is actually quite dark in there um, you know it's not bright bright white so you can see all along there it's not bright bright white and that's that's really really helpful um, for me because when we look at something like this we think it's white and then we try to draw it white and then what happens is we can't draw it white and it just it all looks too pale and actually something like this there are quite a lot of dark colors in if I just move this into here you can see that is really quite dark against the white there. So it's um, it's about kind of tricking your brain into actually seeing the colours that, that are there. Um, you look at a picture like this and all you see is white. You see white with a few little bits of grey. Actually, these white areas here, they're not white. Um, you know, this is sort of like more cool grey in there. Um, we've got sort of like, it actually moves into sort of some quite yellowy colours back down here as well. So it's about tricking your brain into seeing the correct colours. Now, if we look at a dog like this, now it's a printout, so it has blown out a little bit, but actually this is, it's still quite dark. I'd say this is sort of probably warm grey one in here, but it does disappear off into the paper. Now, when you are creating a piece, it's actually a really lovely thing to do. This piece here would be fantastic with all of these lost edges coming off the top, off the sides. You'd have a little bit of colour in there, but actually this would make a really, really dramatic drawing and it's fine to have these bits that just drift off and fade off. It's a little bit blown out because I've printed it out, but um, you know. Uh, and then you've still got some of these cooler colours coming into here, down here. This is very, very cool here. I mean, there's some proper blues in this bit here if you want to go that far um, you know and even the ears here they're kind of drifting off as well so a piece like this actually would be stunning on white paper because um, you get all of those lovely lovely lost soft edges in there and they and you can kind of go um, cold grey one warm grey one um, and just like literally just let it fade off so it just goes into the white paper it'd be really nice you've got again here Without the green on the top here, let's just blow up that little bit again as well. Oops, just bring him down a bit. Um, if you didn't have this green, let's just look at how what that is like there. This is still quite white here. If you look at the viewfinder, if we didn't, if we kind of missed out the green altogether. Um, so you could again, if you weren't going to do the background and you were going to draw this on white paper, you could again get these lovely, lovely lost edges. Now what's going to happen with something like this where it's blown out at the top here, you might end up losing some of these sort of like little um, details on top of the head. Now it's not the end of the world and you can actually just sort of indicate those with like a warm grey or a cold grey, something like that, a very light grey. But having this just drifting off into the white would be lovely. Now when you come down into the dog's face let's just zoom zoom out a little bit um you've actually got some very very dark colors in here um you know even though we look at this and we think oh this is white if we just move our piece of paper in over the top of that you can see there that is not white that is really really a dark that's probably a cold gray four in there um you know so and move it around move it onto sort of like his muzzly area again that's probably a warm gray a cold gray five maybe even some Payne's gray in there maybe even some dark indigo so it's quite dark but when we look at the actual piece we see almost like a white dog and the problem is that our brain goes it's a white dog so we need white pencils but it really isn't a white dog. It's a cold grey dog. It's a it's a, a, a raw umber ten percent dog in here. It's um, a raw umber ten percent dog in here. It's a, a sort of like a purpley colour in here, sepia colour in here. There's really no white apart from where it's really really blown out on the edges, and it's training your brain to pick up those colours and to recognise it's a white dog, but it's not white. 
because there are so many other colours in there. And if you can kind of work on um, the fact that, you you know, if you work with sort of like a little viewfinder like this, you don't necessarily have to draw as in drawing a grid, but you can go, oh, do you know what? Yeah, no, that is, you know, a bit of cold grey one and a bit of cold grey four. Uh, you know, I mean, if I put a little bit of cold grey one in there next to it, not that you can see it. And I don't know whether I've got a cold grey four. I've got a warm grey four. That's a warm grey four there. If that was cold grey, you know, those actually would be this for a white dog. You know, you then take that away and he still looks like a very light dog. So it's all about starting to recognise the colours that are in the fur, um, you know, and kind of working with those and sort of plotting them in and not being scared. And what happens is when you start to kind of draw all of this dog in, you've got your white paper behind it. You start to draw this, the, the, the white fur in with all of your different colours. The first thing that's going to happen is you are going to say, oh, my God, crikey, it's too dark. What on earth am I doing? And that is always the first reaction that you're going to get when you put these colours in. Oh my God, it's too dark. It's not too dark. And when you get to the end, you're going to go, do you know what? Bonnie was right. <laughs> Bonnie's always right. No, I'm not. I'm always wrong. Um, but, you know, you you that is the one thing that is going to happen for absolute definite. When you start to pick up all of the colours in your white animals, you are, the first thing you're going to say is, it's too dark. So if we move to this poodle, this gorgeous poodle, I ought to draw this actually, it's beautiful. And we'll just zoom in a little bit onto that, onto that lovely um, fur on the top there. Now this really isn't white this is actually very warm and there's some yellows in there so if I just move this onto here um, you can see here actually how unwhite unwhite it is you know um, you know it's, yeah it's pale but it's definitely not white so it's definitely got some sort of like yellowy colors and everything in there and that's how you can start to really build up nicely your colors and your um, the tones and everything in there and build up the, the gorgeous um, curls because you can start to sort of shade in these little these little areas in here that's what you would do you'd build up all of this lovely fur by just introducing all of these beautiful um, light shadow areas they're shadow but they're light shadows so you just sort of start to pull those in and then you can lift your highlights out and everything with your um with your putty eraser and start to kind of bring a little bit more definition down into here again down in this ear down here this is sort of quite yellowy and down here as well and you can get all of the lovely you don't have to put tons and tons of detail in you can just get all of these lovely tonal areas in here with your with your darker greys build them around the the paler colors and you've got this beautiful soft white drawing um you know and yeah it takes it takes time and yeah you know with the white dog it's still about all of the layering it's still about what you know everything that you're putting in there um but it's it's not about it being white there's all sorts of different colors and everything in there and kind of recognizing the the hues in there recognizing the temperature that where there's cold where there's warm um on a white dog if it's if it's cold, if it's a cooler temperature, you're more likely to see blues, um, probably some purples in there. If it's a warmer piece, like this is a this one's a much warmer piece. This one here is much cooler. You can see that. You can see the cool blues and everything in there, even though it's quite warm on the top. Whereas this piece, this is much warmer. You can see sort of like a yellowy hue, very very pale sort of buff yellowy hue in there. Um, whereas this one. It's all about the, the blues, the purples, and then we get a little bit of warmth in here, kind of where the sun is, you know, and then we come down here and this again is very, very cool down here. The cat, um, the cat, this cat has got cool and warm. So we've got warm areas here, but we've got cool areas here. It's just how the, the light is affecting it really. And this is an absolutely beautiful photograph. I love this photograph and I need to draw it. Um, so, you know, choosing your colors is really, really important. Choosing the, the temperature of your colors is really important to be able to kind of capture the, the, the lighting and everything like that. And that's, um, 
just very, very quickly, rather than doing it all on the computer, using a printout like this, which you can kind of see a little bit better. I can move it around a little bit better. You can see down here, this is cooler. We've got some blue tinges in here, whereas up here it's a little bit warmer. So mixing your warm and your, your warm greys and your cool greys is, is, uh, works really, really nicely. Um, but don't ever think that a white dog is white because it, because it isn't. And that's why a lot of people choose to do white dogs on a toned paper because they can use a white pencil. Well, I would not use a white pencil for any of this. It would all be done with, with greys, uh, with blues, with purples, with yellows. Um, very fine, light layers of them, not kind of, you know, really, really hard and getting some really vibrant colours in there. They'd all be toned down and I may well burnish a little bit with a white pencil, but nothing would be done with a white pencil. Whereas you would be tempted... If you were drawing this on a toned piece of paper, you'd be tempted to get your white out and and do it all white. Um, and, and actually, you know, something like this. Yeah, it looks stunning if it was on black or, you know, something like that. But um, for me, white on white is just perfect. Um, it's soft. It's subtle. You get all of those lovely tones and everything in there. And um, I, I mean, it's a personal thing, I guess. It is definitely a personal thing, but I much prefer seeing white animals done on white paper. I think they look fantastic. So I hope that's, um, I hope that's been useful. hope that's been helpful. Um, you know, just very, very briefly, just talking about the... Um, you know the colours that you can get into the into the white hair, and not to be scared, and to expect it to look really dark when you first start. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video, and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below, and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. Hope to see you again soon.